Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're all well wherever you are and whatever you're up to. In my video this week, I want to chat to you about one of my latest makes, which is the Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans. And if you've watched my videos before or you've been looking at my blog for a while, then you'll know that I've made quite a few pairs of ginger jeans over the past few years. That's the closet case pattern. And I thought it was kind of time to branch out a little bit. So, and then I thought it might be useful just for me to chat through the differences that I found between the two because they are two very different patterns. So as I'm sure some of you might know already or if you don't know, the closet case patterns, ginger jeans, which is the one I've made before, is made for a stretch denim. So you, you've got to use a denim that has got a spandex in it to make that. Um, it does come with two versions. So there's a high rise skinny fit or a lower rise. Um, they call it a stovepipe leg. So the leg's just kind of a bit straighter. Um, but I've always made the higher rise one and I've used the, and I've done the skinny fit. Um, so yeah, the Dawn jeans are just a little bit different from that. So the Dawn jeans patterns actually comes with four different variations. So you get quite a lot in this pattern. Um, they're also high waisted and they're a rigid denim pattern. So it means that you use a non-stretch fabric to make them. So there's four cuts. You've either got a tapered leg, a straight leg, a wide leg, or you can make the shorts. And there's multiple lengths as well for tall, regular and cropped. And then they've got high rise, which is to sit on the natural waistline. And you can choose between a button or a zip fly. So there is lots of options in this pattern. I did view B, which is the straight leg version. And then I chose to do a zip fly. I just personally prefer zip flies. and um, So that's why I chose that one. So in terms of the fabric, you have to use a denim that is non-stretch, so it's just 100% cotton. And I used some of our new rigid denim, which actually comes in four different colours. So I used the light blue version, but we've got a mid blue, a dark blue and a light grey as well. And despite it being called rigid denim, it's actually not that rigid, it is quite pliable, especially the lighter weight one. And I suspect that might be to do with that it's been kind of bleached or sort of treated to have this kind of lighter appearance to it. The pattern also suggests that you can use a linen twill or corduroy, so it makes the pattern really, really versatile. And it's not quite linen season yet here at g, &G. we've not got that many linens in yet, we will do though. Um, but we do have some lovely new drills which are really bright, um, strong colours, which would be nice. And then if you're thinking of a pair that are more kind of autumn time, then the Robert Kaufman cords that we've got would be good in the corduroy department because they are non-stretch. So now in terms of the size that I made and the alterations, again, I thought it might be useful to kind of can compare it back to when I made the ginger jeans as well, just so that you can kind of see the difference between the two. So in the Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans, I my waist and my hip measurements kind of sat across a few sizes, which is totally common. Like you guys are probably going to find that that happens to you as well. Um, interestingly though, when I make the ginger jeans, I do fit into one size a bit more. I usually make a size six in closet case patterns for, for anything, whether it's tops or bottoms. Um, but when I do make the ginger jeans and I make the size six, I usually take it in a little bit at the hips, but on the dawn jeans, for the at the waist, I was basically I'm basically kind of sitting between a size six and an eight. But then at the hips, I'm kind of between I'm like a two, just over a two, like kind of between a two and a four. So basically what I did was from trial and error and like the jeans that I've made in the past, I know that I personally need to do a flat bum adjustment. So that is basically when you kind of cut a, cut a line into the back rise of the jeans and then you just kind of take out a little bit of a wedge. So I always do that to my pattern there. And again, just I just know this from trial and error and like making trousers and jeans in the past. I also do the same out of the back yoke section too, just because I quite often get like a bit of fabric bunching at the back. So once I'd made those adjustments, I then measured what the length of the crotch was going to be. So I initially thought that I would just make a size six. So that was like the size that I had cut out of the pattern. I used a PDF for this one and I just, I was a bit lazy and didn't trace it. So just cut it out. Um, so I'd cut out the size six, I'd done my flat bum adjustment and the adjustment at the yoke and then I wanted to work out what size the, the or what length that crotch curve was going to be. So I had to measure the back yoke, the back crotch curve and the front crotch curve and then obviously take an account of the seam allowance as well. So then I could work out like what the, you know, what the, what the length of that curve was going to be. 
and then I basically put the measuring tape round my uh, own actual crotch and then I could see where the jeans were like kind of going to sit. Of course you've got the waistband on top of that as well so remember to sort of take that into account. Um, but once I knew where the rise of the jeans was actually going to sit, I then measured what my waist measurement was at that point. And it was then that I realised I actually probably need the size 8 at the waist. So because I'd already cut out the pattern, I just had to make a little note on my pattern pieces. And then when I was cutting out my fabric, I just cut a little bit extra, basically, of the fabric out. And then I actually then merged it to a size 2 by the time I got to the hips. And then the legs are also a size 2 as well, because really at my hips, that's, that's basically what size I was. So there was a little bit of kind of like messing around really and it definitely did help that I had me made jeans before. So if you've not made jeans before and you are making these for the first time and you do fall between quite a few different sizes, it's probably worthwhile just making up a 12 just so that you can check all of these things before you cut into your denim. So in terms of other things that compare the dawn jeans to the ginger jeans and um, because i know quite a few of you have maybe made the ginger jeans before or you might be thinking do i want to make a stretch jean or do i want to make a non-stretch jean um so th the other differences that i found were the fly so the way that the fly is constructed even though they're both set flies is really different in the in the jaw in the john's don's <laughs> versus the ginger so in the ginger the there's like a kind of extension bit on the on the front leg which then makes the fly whereas on the dons there's like an actual separate bit of fabric that you sort of have to sew on and just the way that it's put together is different you end up with top stitching in a slightly different place as well and um, I, I actually kind of liked both ways I thought it was interesting to do another way because I'd only ever done one way before and I just followed the instructions um, and I would try to be like as accurate as I could with all the pattern markings and making sure that you, you have to kind of know when to stop stitching at certain points but as long as you just kind of take your time and you do follow the instructions then you know I think it was it was pretty good so yeah the way that it's the way the fly is actually constructed is different. And then the other thing that is different is the pocket lining bags. So in the gingers, the pocket lining kind of extends and, and is like sort of into the fly on the inside. So it kind of creates this pocket stay, which just, I guess it kind of gives like more like rigidity or like support at the front of the jeans. Whereas on the dons, the pocket bag is totally separate from the front fly. I actually prefer when the pocket stay comes right into the fly. I don't know if it's like a post having a baby thing um, but I just feel like I like that extra support there on my tummy and um, so I think it's kind of a personal preference thing I've got a friend who doesn't like that at all and doesn't like that sort of extra firmness and support at the front so yeah you could just sort of see the difference I mean I'm glad I've done it because now I know that I definitely do like the extension going into the fly and if I do make the dons again I would probably work out a way to try and do that um, but yeah it's just another difference to kind of note really and then the other difference that I noted is that even though I've made the high rise version of the gingers and then the dons are also high rise as well I actually found on my body that the dawn jeans are a bit higher almost like about an inch and a half to two inches they, that's how much higher they sit on me compared to the gingers and um, again I quite like that quite a lot of my tops and jumpers and stuff are kind of cropped because that's such a popular style at the moment and um, but it's just another thing I guess to sort of bear in mind but overall I'm really happy with the jeans they're really comfy and as I said in the beginning even though the denim is called rigid denim it is actually quite soft and they've wore, they're really comfy they've worn in really well and I've been wearing them so much the only thing I'm still undecided about is the hem so in my original vision of the jeans I was planning to do a frayed hem at the bottom but then I totally chickened out when it came to do it and I was just really worried that I was going to cut them too short because there's not really any going back with a frayed hem like once you've cut it and frayed it that's just kind of is the length of the jean so at the moment I've just turned them back um, at the bottom and I've not hemmed them or anything so they're just kind of loose at the bottom and um, maybe in the summer I'll pluck up enough courage to to free them and then they'll just be cropped jeans but I do always wear them at a crop length anyway and um, so yeah 
that's the only thing I, I can't decide about but otherwise I really love them and I'm sure I will make them again and um, I think they'd look really nice and quite a nice thick sort of firm linen for the summer and um, so I hope you found that useful and um, if you've got any questions about the ginger or the Don jeans then just feel free to leave me a, a question in the comments below and I shall try to help and um, there's also a blog post that goes with this video so I'll link to that in the description and it's got links to where you can buy the pattern and the fabric from our website as well depending on when you're watching this video the fabric might show us out of stock but we are getting more and if you want to specifically be notified when it is back in stock then you can always drop us drop our general inquiries email um, a little note and then the girls in the shop can let you know when it's back in again um, but thanks so much for watching guys and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video I've got a really exciting amazing new fabrics post coming up soon and um, so I shall see you next time <laughs> bye <laughs>